Okay, you are back with Pimp and the Two Schleps. I think it's pretty obvious who the pimp is here. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very obvious. It's never going to get with old. These sunnies. Ali wears his sunglasses at night. <laughs> it's because I'm a celebrity now. It's That's so what you're supposed good. to do. You wouldn't know. No. <laughs> Freaking civilian. Every time. Sit there Trash on your talk ass. Me like you're a boxer. Yeah, look at you. He's wearing Gary or some shirt. He's more of a celebrity a than you. It's true. Two's on. Gaz. You never see him wearing your merch. Oh, is that why everybody was tuning in, were they? I think, hey, well. where'd the cheat go? Maybe, but uh, I do, yeah, I do really like looking over to you and just feeling like SNL 85. Yep. It's great. I, I think it should be mandatory. You can't take those off ever. I feel like walking Phoenix or something, just sitting there with like David Letterman and just, I'm surprised that you the, guys aren't angry you know at what me. else? There is really no difference between him and an SNL celebrity. He does no. talk about Reagan a lot. <laughs> That's, I'm a Reagan uh, simp. <laughs> It's true, man. I Jordan, can we can we get like a little bit of an update on this uh, Twitter? There are war? a lot of people asking because they're talking first about. First of all, I don't know anything about. about, about what do you want to know? Uh, what we do you guys don't know. know. First of all, what is this union? Why do you have a beef with them? I thought you liked unions. Whoa. Is that what they're saying? Whoa. That's what That's I'm saying. That's what we're saying. Oh, right. <laughs> we don't know. Okay, well, this is. if you guys don't know, maybe I do have some splaining to do. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. <laughs> like. Yeah, I'm, dude, I think I'm less clued in than the fans, so, like. <laughs> well, you know what, I, 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 will, uh, I, will, I will preface this with as soon as I started going after the Australian Unemployment Workers Union, a lot of heavyweights within the labour movement who I can't disclose, <coughs> Bill Shorten stuff it, but they were saying... <laughs> <laughs> but there was there was others there was there was others as well. But uh, a lot of them were messaging me and just online saying thank you for going after these clods. Damn. They are a blight on the movement. They're not associated with the movement. In fact, what they have done is pushed out a lot of good comrades within the union movement Comrades. and then just kind of created this little nexus bubble for themselves where they take advantage of all of these privileges of being a union boss without doing anything for their membership. In fact, I'm pretty sure that their membership is just 47 members. <laughs> Why? Even though we're on paper, one of the biggest unions there are, you should be under this economy, am I right? But they ostensibly have all of these members, but the ones that actually get to vote, 47 members. Why have they done that? Because they've had some Stalinist takeover. And look, before you get triggered, Ali, I'm just as much of a fan of Stalin as you are. But <laughs> the way that he got there, I think we could admit, is the only dirty blight on his record. <laughs> I have a... Sorry, so I have a... So these guys are... Yes. So these guys are the union for the unemployed. Hmm? Yeah, so yeah. Who are they demanding rights from if they're unemployed? Because usually the workplace is supposed. That's to a give... really good yeah, point. Exactly. Look, God. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're unemployed union. I mean, I don't. You know do that... realize that's an oxymoron. Yeah, right? yeah that's yeah. what I'm thinking. How are you? Part, like unions are supposed to represent. Workers. Yeah, you're not working. What the fuck's that all about? The fact that they come back with this defense of you know, being unemployed is a job. Looking for a job is a job in itself. Nah, no, it's not. Not really. No, it's not. You're unemployed. Now, look, I understand that people that are unemployed deserve representation, but not from these fucks. The reason yeah. that they have this job in the first place is because they can't get a job. They send uh, reports to the Senate, they basically sit there and say, we demand a wage for ourselves because we don't have the serotonin to get ourselves a job. Oh, okay, so you're lazy? No, you don't understand. I don't have serotonin. What is the difference? Are you lazy or not? Yeah. You, like, dude, I'm sorry, but these people are just complete blights on the universe and you can tell because there's so many tweets of them saying, first of all, 57,000 tweets. Yeah, that guy's hardworking, aren't they? They're, they're really working for their constituencies. Are they bad numbers? Thousand tweets. They're bad numbers. Well, it's just like, oh, what the you're fuck saying, else are you doing with I your life? I understand. I understand. You're saying, yeah, they're just they're just on Twitter all. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah. It's, that's a telltale. Maybe that's sign. why you can't get a job. <laughs> Wait, uh, how do but, they make money if like none of their uh, union members are earning money? Charity. Really? Oh. They just get it out of donations. But the thing is that everybody understands well, the old membership of, of the unemployed workers union was good, and they were getting results. But I think that they were pushed out 
pretty much because, hey, you're not supposed to be getting results. We're supposed to just have a cushy job where we sit here and bitch about the rest of the labour movement. Yeah, what comrades. All they do is sit there and shit on Bill Shorten because he dared get results for his members, unlike them. They um, want to. Br- someone's written, they want to bring down capitalism by not being able to make eye contact during a job interview. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Uh, Shout them out. Uh, the king. Uh, I've lost them already. But thanks, thanks for your time. <laughs> thanks for your support. But what was it? Michael Rickow. I've got to say yeah. that is one of the greatest burns I've ever heard in my really, life. Yeah. I'm not being at all ironic when I say that. that yeah, I like that a lot. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, and I will be stealing that and not giving you credit <laughs> in a video. So how did you get into like a, a Twitter spat with it? Yeah, how, like who started? Who started? You know what happened? One of these little pieces of shit was sitting there with just... I'm sorry, I, I really hate this when hipster comedians sit there and go, oh, you just said I own someone on Twitter, but man, did I own this guy I mean, on who Twitter. Who cares? Like, yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of these, you know, you're, you're on the platform, but I don't think that you're, you know, as sort of, sort of persistent as, you know, you don't live on Twitter. Like some people live on Twitter, right? Like this guy. Right, right. Anyway, I can't even remember his name. He's just so irrelevant. Where's your views, bro? But I think there's more people watching this now than he has Twitter followers in his entire career, and that's all he does. Instead of trying to find a job, he sits there and tweets. And so Fuck. he, um, anyway, so, anyway, he wrote something snarky about the reason that Geordies hates the media is because he tried to get a job oh, at the SBS right. and failed. And so I just corrected the record and <laughs> said that, like, first off, the SBS have offered me jobs in the past. I was like, you know, writing articles for them in yeah, the past. Yeah, you used to work for SBS. Yeah, I was writing articles yeah. for them in the past, and the reason, and like, I've got Him proof of mom. them saying to me when I wrote a, a piece saying this is how Murdoch controls the media, including the SBS. All of a sudden, very happy to publish all the other articles. Then, as soon as that article comes out, no, no, we can't do that. That's just really like we don't do that in journalism. You know, like we don't attack other journalists. We think that's low form. So after that, I started piecing it together that, holy shit, this is systemic. This is everyone. This is the ABC. This is the SBS. They're all in on this together. Um, It's not this, like, you know, the Murdoch press is bad. ABC, SBS, good. No. They're all there for their job. They don't care about democracy. They don't care about who's right and who's wrong. They care about keeping their fucking job. That's it. So after that, I think I wrote a couple more articles, but I just it didn't sit well with me, and so I eventually just opted out. So I sent that message to them, just the emails showing that this is exactly what they said. Then you got all these pricks from The Guardian and ABC and whatnot sitting there saying that, like, friendly Geordies doesn't understand the difference between being spiked politely and censorship. Mm. I'm sorry, but they were offering more... They, they wanted more articles out of me. They just didn't want that article. Really? That's fucking censorship. Yeah. And on top of that, isn't that amazing that the press in this country don't even understand that they're tools. They're so immersed in it that they just think, no, he just his editor said, no, end of story. Yeah. That's their psychology. They don't understand that they are tools of the propaganda model. It scares me when you get into this. So anyway, obviously, I just spent way too much time on it because that's the one thing that always triggers me mm. is dumb shit journalists. Mm. And that is what the entire system replicates and encourages is idiots that obviously all you want is cogs. You don't want thinking individuals as yeah. journalists. But you already, enough, you already, you yeah. already sort of published <clears throat> that you've done, you know, whatever you've done in the, in the media sphere, like whether it's like, I don't know, you did something with the ABC, I'm sure it's like. Oh but yeah, you did Fresh Blood or something. That's You've kind of, kind of worked for them but, all at some yeah, point. Yeah, but dude, it's also like so... It's always like on the fringes or what. Yeah, but. sure, but it's just funny. It's just like that argument is like... It's just, first of all, it's untrue and it's so lame to be like, you wanted a job on SBS. It's like, dude, who who wants a job on SBS? I mean, like... I, I, <laughs> I, <at one laughs> Having point, said that, I do want a job at the SBS. Well, at one point... Doing I, like specifically the international radio broadcast of like Hindi and Urdu. I would oh, love that. Yeah, no, there is definitely jobs at the SBS that you would want, aka being the host of K-pop Asia. But that's <laughs> yeah. that's about it. I do it for free. It's like that, like you radio. Don't want to be part is... of the news department there. No, and by like coming back to your point, I do remember this like thing when you used to write for SBS. There was a period. Now that I think about it, there was a period when like he was actually quite, like Jordan was actually quite hopeful. 
of the media well, landscape. Dude, of course. And I mean, then, like, like, at one point, I have you a just BA changed. in media. You, huh? I was the same. I was the same. I because I, I started BA. getting the inside scoop. You know, I'd be invited onto SP. I'd be invited onto ABC, onto like radio shows, and uh, they'd get me on, and then they'd rock bottom me. They'd really do the, I grabbed her, sweet, can't, whatever. <laughs> I was, they'd tell me to go on for something. Uh, sweet, sweet, it was something sweet. completely different that they, they'd highlight from my talk and then they'd just put that out of context and put that on air that day. And so uh, that was happening But that was, that was happening before, before that. It was because I was going there and I just wasn't playing the game because they would say to you before you went really? on air, this is what you can and can't talk about. So then I just Wait, realized, what could you not talk about and what can you talk about? Yeah. At the time, because this was a long time ago, yeah. they were just, saying, just, don't say anything mean about Tony Abbott. Can I just write? Well, that's my whole shtick. My brother. What, what, why am I on then? Someone's just written, my brother-in-law works at the ABC and has spoken about censorship on his articles. Changes a few wor uh, works, change the tone. So they do. They, this is, it's just well, that's a reaffirming. Common thing. Yeah. Right, yeah, it happens yeah. everywhere. Yeah. But I'd imagine something like the ABC should not say don't be critical of Tony Abbott. Shut up, Lord. First of all... Exactly. But they do. Yeah, but they do it themselves too, didn't they? Like, it's a different thing. Didn't, like, everyone shit on Tony Abbott? He, the, the motherfucker got two years and he was out. Like, yeah. <laughs> he, like there's a lot of people I'm that went ape shit Andrew on him. Andrew Bolt is more critical of Tony Abbott than the ABC is. Mm. It's just whoever's paying their checks. Really? It's just, whoever's signing that off, they're just not going to say shit about so them. With, <clears throat> so with the beef... So anyway, these idiots don't like, understand what role they play. Who said um, so? And it, so and then he was just talking about it. So so he just back and forth, and he just kept changing his argument. So first it was you couldn't get a job at the SBS. Ha uh ha! -huh. You don't understand the difference between being censored and fired. Well, he says there that I wasn't fired. He just didn't want that article to come out. Yeah, but that's just because they were trying to cover their ass. Oh, so censorship. Yeah. You know. It's such like they, these people can't connect the dots together and it's very frustrating that these are supposed to be the defenders of the poor and hungry in this country and they're just idiots. Mm. Absolute nitwits that come from wealthy, well-fed families. They are wealthy and well-fed themselves. They put themselves into positions where they are wealthy and well-fed and that's all they're concerned with is protecting their job. Anybody, this is the dead giveaway of a, a sack of shit. If they have more than one tweet talking about them getting Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's actually a fair. I just can't wait for – I'm keen for the for the takedown. The next oh, week. and it's coming. <laughs> and I know that there would be a lot of LARPers that are sitting there very scared about what's coming next to Australia. <laughs> but you, you'd be, well, you, sh you should be. You, shouldn't you should be very scared because I know all the skeletons in your closet. I've got a lot of powerful people that have been messaging me about you. Oh, in fact, oh th th there seems I'm to be a lot of you. hatred for this union specifically. And this is from other unionists. That's Good crazy. unionists, ones that are effective. Yeah, dude. And to think about, like, the only people that didn't know about this was the both of us. <laughs> yeah, like, we have no clue what's yeah. happening. Uh, one of Jordan's, like, uh, like staffers, I guess, uh, I don't know, like, one of the people I work came up and he was telling me about, like, so, the unemployment union, what do you reckon? I was like, um, I don't know what the fuck you're yeah, talking same, about, dude. I was dude. just like, what, dude? And the unemployed have a union? Yeah, that's what yeah. I was like. What, that's mm. a note. Like you said, an oxymoron. Like, why do the unemployed have union? If they have union, who pays for them? They're unemployed. <laughs> and what are they asking for? They're unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I, that, know, I really just want to out them because it's exactly what's happened to the Greens in New South Wales. It's been taken over by this little squadron of cunts that have put themselves in all of the right key positions and they are moving that institution into stupid, dumb, radical positions that they shouldn't be in, mm. that is making everyone else hate them and becoming extremely ineffective in the process, and it's all for self-serving purposes. Well, if everyone kind of hates them the way you're saying, they must be doing something wrong. They must be doing something wrong. Um, I'm just glad you're finally tackling the I mean, I just don't understand it. How can you be in a union and attacking Bill Shorten? Yeah, isn't he like the union czar, or at least was? Yeah. He's yeah. The, he's a union guy. That's what he got criticized for, yeah. that he's too pro-union. <laughs> Wasn't that what eventually led him not being the prime minister? And also, if you're not affiliated with the ACTU, fuck off. Mm. What Wait, is so it? they're not affiliated with no. the ACTU? 
Yeah, all right. Well, I'm just glad you've finally taken down the people that deserve to be taken down. The unemployed. <laughs> it's gone full circle and you've become Sky News. I'm stoked. I am really excited about this because finally I will have a point to people like Gus that say union shield. Ah, 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 ah. Shield for good union. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it actually kind of is a cool... It, it, look, it's, I, I think without sounding like trivial, it will be a good point of differentiation where it's kind of just like... I don't love unions. I took one down. It's just like, well, you can't really argue with that. <laughs> um, but I've got to say, I can't go into the specifics, but there is a lot of damning things that people have sent me about specific people in that union. Jesus. And that's going to be the best. Oh. Salacious stuff is always the most damaging. Yeah, do that on Look, your I own. I really wish that that wasn't the case, but hey, yeah. roll with the punches. Salacious B crumb be coming for you. There's a. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's actually another question for you, Jordan, while we're on this um, topic. I mean, slightly unrelated. Um, what do people mean uh, by Hawk and Keating's economic reforms? What, what, is, what were the reforms? Oh, well, it was pretty much just restructuring the entire economy, but in short. The Accord, which sort of uh, suppressed wage increases while they were restructuring. Um, there was also, of course, floating the Aussie dollar. There was privatising certain institutions. Now, there's economic arguments for and against that, and I am not enough of a heady mind to understand them. But obviously, I'm going to defend them because it was Paul Keating that mm. did it. Mm. Huh? The, are you talking about the dollar? What, what? No, they're floating the Aussie dollar. And obviously, there's arguments for and against floating the Aussie dollar. But the main thing that they did which everybody can have their little gripes and nitpicks of what Hawke and Keating did that was uh that they didn't like about them but at the end of the day they were able to break stagflation they were able to break this cons this this uh, this thing that was happening in the economy which was that the economy was uh going into gross inflation mm. and at the same time the economy was stagnating yeah so they were able to do that someone says um, they want you to explain floating the dollar, and I kind of do too. <laughs> oh, it's really simple. Look, before that, the Australian government, and also another big thing that he did that changed was he made the Reserve Bank independent. But anyway, and look, independent, it's still just stacked with a bunch of liberal stooges. I'm glad you did the air quotes for that. Yeah. It's independent. Right. Well, it's the same way that the ABC is independent. Yes, Not exactly. Really. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, go on, floating the dollar. Floating the dollar, before Hawke and Keating the Australian government determined how much the Aussie dollar was worth. After Hawke and Keating, it was international markets that determined how much the Australian dollar Dude, was worth. Free market. This yeah. is the whole thing. Anybody that says that the Labor Party is the party that is against the free market, that is the party that has reduced tariffs more than anyone in human history. Hell yeah. I mean, in Australian history. Uh, you know, like pretty much just created the – freed up every market in this country, including the banking sector. And we are stronger for the better. Yep. Uh, it's, it's, look, <laughs> when people are always saying, oh, I can't believe that he privatised the Commonwealth Bank, I can, and that was retribution for Jack Lang, a.k.a. the best leader the world has ever seen. How's it retribution? Because he was like Mussolini, but taller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you mean retribution? What? What? They like wouldn't get, like Jack Lang went into a Commonwealth Bank once and they, they wouldn't give him a loan. He was like, I need a tan leather, damn you. And they're like, not today. As always... Scarily spot on. There's just a few of the details that are a bit amiss, so I'll fill you in. <laughs> but Jack Lang, he was the New South Wales Premier during the Great Depression, which back then was being the Prime Minister of the country because there was just much more power in the States. And there's still a lot of power now, but mm. no one recognises that. But in those days, it was. I mean, there was, there was like because of the things that he was trying to do, which was just revolutionary at the time. He came up with Keynesianism before Keynes did. So during the Great Depression, the British said, uh, for the great duress of opening up a third front for us and using your men as cadden fodder and stimulating our economy by buying exclusively off us and going into debt to buy all the equipment for your soldiers to die for us, we are going to demand that you pay 5% interest on the debts now during the Great Depression. Whoa! Yes. Obscene. Where's the gratitude? Yeah, what are we, some like Southeast Asian country? For fuck's sake. <laughs> mm. 
I love that too. I just used to feel a pain. I want to just like give a little bit of a tidbit. Before 19, the reason why Jordan is saying that states were more powerful, like before 1942, all of the taxes that were collected were actually collected by states. And then after 1942, it was delegated to the federal government, which dramatically increased the federal government's power and reduced the state power. And a lot of this was to do with Jack Lang because he came in and he said, that's insane. We're not paying back the debt during the... Uh, uh, during the uh, the depression that's not happening because our and, and it was true in the 30s again because you grew up under keating and you can thank him for that mm. but before hawk and keating australia was much poorer than what it is now noticeably totally. poorer yeah and in the 30s because we were still just a developing nation we were very young you were walking around in Sydney, and I've been listening to historians. They were saying it wasn't that much better than Bangladesh. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been. People well, were kind of just living around in, in, in squalid little hubs, and, and it, that was one like, of the things that he introduced, actually. He, was, he introduced all of these revolutionary reforms uh, that no one in the uh, empire had been introducing. So things like uh, during the Great Depression, he froze tenants... Uh, sorry, he froze landlords' rights to kick out tenants. He came in and he said, we're not paying back 5% interest ever. We're going to reduce that to 3%, which is what everybody else in the world is doing. Um, we are going to move from a gold standard to what I think he called something like the common good standard, but it basically became the um, GDP. But that um, wasn't a – he thought of that before anyone else in the world and Keynesianism and Keynesianism while everyone else was saying we're just going to not spend anything and then put all that money back into repaying our debts to Britain. That's – yeah. That, oh, that's right. He, he was, was the one, one that was like, not on my watch, fellas. And it wasn't was, – wasn't, <laughs> didn't he like surround – yeah, the, the – oh, a, 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 but like the, the, the reserve, the like national – the budget basically with a bunch of guys with like – uh, dro like a bunch of like wharfy hooligans with like yeah. baseball bats and shit. Yeah. So what happened is Joseph Lyons became prime minister, who was the Tory at the time, and uh, before that, with Scullin, he had a terrible relationship. Any anyway, and the Labor prime minister up there with Scullin wasn't that much better. But as soon as the Tory came in. He wanted Lang's blood and he was willing to go to the length of starting a civil war to get rid of Jack Lang. That is the closest Australia has ever come to a civil war because he was saying, we're going to send in the military and we're going to push you out by force. And the New South Wales police service was like, we got your back, Lang. So that, and back oh, then oh. the police force and the military were kind of pretty even. Whoa. What numbers wise? Numbers wise, power training wise. wise, power wise. Yeah, all of it. Dude, I've, can't we bring back, I, I love the days of politics where it was a lot more to do with like salted meats, tanning leather and drubbing, you know? And who was the tallest? Yeah, yeah. I swear that was a huge reason that Jack Lang became <laughs> premier. It's just he was like yeah. six foot seven, arms like a tree trunk, <laughs> a stare that would make you cry for your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, a, yeah, yeah, like, and a gullet who could take more cold ales than the next man. <laughs> so awesome. So, Joseph Lyons uh, came in with, I can't remember what exactly the reforms were called now, but he said, it, essentially the reforms were that New South Wales no longer had control over its own finances, mm. which was just a way of economically starving him and shutting down the state. While Jack Lang was saying his argument was, we're not paying back the debt because paying back the debt would mean that we would be forcing public servants to work for free and that slavery and the British Empire signed 100 years ago that there's going to be no slaves in the British Empire. So he was arguing that. They just came in and said, yeah, well, okay, well, we'll just distribute the wealth, uh, we'll just distribute New South Wales' money instead then. So that's the way that they got around that. And that's when power started shifting towards federal government. Before that, it pretty much just controlled the army and the post office. It's pretty yeah, much it. Yeah. There, was a, there was a high court case around that time where state governments sued the federal government saying that you don't have authority to collect taxes. Because technically speaking, the constitution mandates the states to collect taxes and not the federal government. But then the high court interpreted it as like, actually, no, shut the fuck up. Uh, they can and they will because they're going to distribute it back to you. And that dramatically changed the power dynamics be between states and the federal government to the point where, like, as we've, throughout Australian history, like, the federal government has started, started to become more and more powerful. And mm. there are calls within pretty much all sections of politics that want federalism, uh, federal government to be even more powerful. And one of the biggest advocates for that is Tony Abbott. 
Really? Tony Abbott, I've mentioned this before, and I even then I couldn't remember the name of the article, but part of my course at uni Damn. doing law was a, an article by Tony Abbott, which was on federalism. It was actually a, a decent article. Uh, Barry Krabs, great name, just said, keep in mind the Greens of the day, and then in brackets, communist party, considered, <laughs> la considered <laughs> Lang. Hey, what's changed? Considered... Damn, damn straight. Considered Lang a fas fascist, and then they said kick, whatever that means. Well, look, I'm not into those names, but I also consider him a fascist. Oh. But here's the difference. I think that's mad. Yeah, oh. I knew that was going to come. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was. It was It was the closest thing Australia ever had to a Mussolini figure yeah. or a Stalin figure or a Hitler figure. People used to march in the streets with pictures of him. Can you imagine anyone marching in the streets with Mike Baird's face on like, it? Yeah, it's not going to happen. Nah, they do it with Koala Killer. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were coming back. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, so they used to march around in the streets. There was Everyone used to wear these badges. If anyone has one of them, I will give you a hefty sum of money, a.k.a. as much as that creep wanted for Miss Love Socks, $50. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to pay for delivery. Like, pay for delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, but he I'd... used to have these badges that said uh, Lang was right. That was when he got kicked out. I'll, I'll go to that part later. And also, um, I can't even remember the, the, the other one before that, but he, he was a cult figure. Mm. with a huge following. Why? Because the Labor Party used to own a radio station and a newspaper with high circulation so they could actually put forward their arguments to the population yeah. so they were able to get into power. Mm. That's that's scary because it really They were the OG Murdoch crew. <laughs> well, it showed no, they were just... They had an MSNBC. They had something that was able to propagate their message where they, they don't have that. Yeah. Um, no, it shows the like the significance ABC. of the media, right? The power yeah. they hold. What but, about um, the left loony ABC? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Do you think of that? <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so anyway, so th that was all happening. And uh, so, to get to your point, Miss Love, mm. and this is amazing, <laughs> Jack Lang, <laughs> such a boss... Then said, okay, you guys control the finances of New South Wales. That's all well and good. I'm turning New South Wales into a cash economy. So he completely got rid of taxes. What? And starved the federal government. What? And as a result of that, the entire banking system shat themselves because for a brief moment, they weren't controlling money. Sick. And so he used to say to everybody, you just bring in all your cash. That's the way that we're going to collect ca taxes in the state. We're going to put it in trades hall in Sydney. We're going to take all of it out, all of the gold that we have out of um, treasury. Oh my you guys God. control you that. Serious? Yes. We're putting that into Trace Hall. And then he hired a bunch of out of work loggers <laughs> to just stand around with batons. <laughs> and every time any of the debt collectors came, just be like, Righto, lads, name have it. And they beat the shit out of him. Are you serious? Yes. Dude. <laughs> Isn't he? Uh, He's a boss. Uh, did he? Jack a... Lang is the best leader Australia's ever had. That's a pretty fucked up movie. But, like, but did he I'm get reading, killed? Yeah. I'm like, reading it. That is no, that is gonna ridiculous. fuck over. He didn't. He like died. if you say that the entire economy is gonna be cash. First of all, the banks are not stressing because they don't have control. The banks are stressing because they don't have enough cash. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, the gold they don't have enough gold either. So I can totally imagine the entire ruling elite shitting themselves. They were. So they what were. happened to him after that? Because look. Yes, obviously the ruling elite hated him from the very beginning, but he had such a strong following. Again, people were marching in the streets with pictures of him. Yeah, I've seen that. Day yeah. dot. It's amazing. The, the footage is incredible. So then what happened is the governor, uh, sorry, the, uh, the governor at the time, uh, he was getting pressure, especially from the banks, because the banks hated Jack Lang for doing this. <laughs> they were saying, you've got to get rid of this motherfucker. And so they came up with some trumped up charges and it was the first dismissal that uh, Australia has in its history. They dismissed Jack Lang and he was in the position and it's in his biography. He was sitting there going, okay, watch my next move here. Well, I could kidnap the, G the governor and hold him for ransom. Yes, good Which choice. is what he was thinking of doing. I mean, it's a good and option. Like, and, the, and the police chief commissioner at the time was like, we could do it, just give me the word. Oh, and man. And so they were basically just going to form this thing of just saying, like, no, fuck you, New South Wales is its own country. They were, they, were, they were getting to that level, and there was a lot of tension rising. It was very close to a civil war 
between New South Wales and the federal government. Finally, Shit. the federal government started moving in battleships into Sydney Harbour <laughs> and then they thought, well, you know, we, we could win this war. It would be a war of attrition, but we reduce Sydney to rubble and kill a bunch of people in the process, so it's yeah. not worth it. So yeah. he just eventually stepped down right. and took one for the team because he was a good leader. He was a good leader. Yeah. Did and he, he have to go to jail? No, no, no. He just got dismissed. And that was the end of that. But when he was dismissed, think about how loved this man was. The population of Sydney at the time was a million. 400,000 people came out to march for Jack Lane. Oh wow. God. That's crazy. You don't even Lightly get that for climate change now. There's like 300,000 across the country for 25 million. Yeah, that's a good point. Fuck. So that nearly is half the population went out on the streets, meaning that the, most of the population wanted Jack Lang to remain Premier. Damn. What a king, man. dude. He could have definitely, if he had that level of support, Civil War wouldn't have been an issue for him. That's what was, he, he was saying, was that we him? could have done it, but they had heavy artillery. You know, the shelling could have only gone so far because it was from ship. Uh, but it was, you know, like, yeah. as he was saying, it was, it was too heavy a price for him to remain Premier. Yeah, yeah. But he should have. That's, he should have remained Premier because no, if they took up the, the Lang plan instead of the Premier's plan, that would have hollowed out the depression. Every economist agrees with that. Now, that's just conventional wisdom. In fact, Rudd was really just using the template, saying, uh, I'm following Keynes' template. But Keynes was following Jack Lang's template. Mm. He was a visionary thinker, extremely intelligent, and was really fucking muscly. He looks yeah. like... <laughs> They're saying they, they, want, they said Jack Lang shirts when. Yeah. And what do you think about this, guys? Uh, me and my little rat are thinking that we're going to make the shirts. <laughs> we could just have uh, Lang was right, which is the classic. I, like, I, I really I, just want to call it Lang Gang. Lang Gang? Well, yeah, Lang Gang. That's better. Yang that's gang. better. Huh? It's too close to Yang Gang. That's what I'm saying. Well, what's that's Yang, the point. What is Yang Gang? Oh, like Andrew Yang. It's like, just oh, because, yeah, he's cares? not a visionary popular leader. He's just a Republican. Dude, you don't want to get the Yang clubs. Gang against you. Huh? You don't want to get the Yang Gang against you. They love him. Everyone, no, Still. everyone likes Lang Gang, man. I'm liking it. Yeah, I like Lang Gang. All right, all right. the tongue, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dude, I really want those little story. badges. He's yeah, amazing. That, I, that didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know no, Jack Lang a lot is, about that. Oh, he, he, he's a true like visionary. Him. And he was the guy that trained Paul Keating. Paul Keating used to go to that's, his house. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Two times a week. That's, yeah, that's how I know him. Right. Yeah. Fuck, so Paul Keating got training from... Oh, it all Says makes it all. sense now. Did, did Keating train anyone else? Was there another protege to Keating? Or not? Yeah, Chris Bowen. Who, who's that? He was the shadow treasurer. Now he's the shadow health minister. Oh, right. He's actually but he and, he and uh, Keating are tight. They talk to really? each other like a couple of times. Him and uh, Rudd are also tight from what I hear. Oh, yeah. He gives out oh, advice no. to everybody Q in the Labor it. Party. He's good, but, yeah, like he talks to Bowen a lot. Um, and Bowen's actually pretty good too. I like him. Oh, Bowen's smart. There's a lot of dumb I met Bowen. Labor you know, Party. The, thing is, the thing about Bowen, and I feel sorry for him, I think it's just he comes off as very intense, but it's just because he's always thinking about really intense things. He's a real thinker, mm -hmm. and so he's too short. I think that's also one of the. Problems. Yeah, there's that. Look, it's it's a problem. <laughs> you have to be six foot six. But he's a smart Sorry. guy. You can you can like oh, Bowen. Yeah, yeah listen yeah, to him yeah. for like ten Deep minutes, thinker. and you'll figure out that he's he's no dumb witch. And he's interested in heavy subjects. He's yeah. constantly thinking about climate change and the economy. He's interested in the right subjects too, which is yeah. what I like about him. Everyone, he never talks about bullshit. Everyone wants Lang Gang shirt, so I think you should jump on it. But otherwise, people look. There's a few things coming out. People keep asking. When are the docos coming out, Jordan? And I assume they mean, you know, the long line of docos that are coming out. Yeah, there is some they keep docos that are coming out and you're thinking about the Murray one. That's going to be far off in the future, but there's another one that's coming out that's going to be even better and you just wait. I can't tell you anything oh, about yeah. it, but I'm yeah. very excited. Oh, that's coming first, is it? Yeah. Is it? Okay. You just hold on. Hold on to your briefs. Jesus, we're good. dropping dimes tonight. Um, it's just that heaps of people keep up, keep asking. So it's like, okay, at least now you know soon. Did you think that was going to be the answer? Oh, you did. Oh, well, too bad. Um, there's two others. Someone, they keep asking about ACCC in Google. Is that right? Oh, yeah. That's actually that. You, I think I told you about that. Australia has like made this landmark judgment where they're now forcing um, Google and basically just these like online search engines to pay for... Um, uh, t 
dude, now that he's gone, isn't it true? Liberals are mad. Yeah, dude, the libs are Fuck awesome. I love pri- privatize everything. I don't know what is up with this. No, 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 Who's no, no. your labor yeah, party? Taxes suck. And like, I like, <laughs> you know, if someone's poor, it's because they chose to be poor. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. But anyway, so like, um, <laughs> the A triple, uh, the, the, um, we're basically forcing um, Google and Facebook to pay media outlets, like let's say the Guardian or the ABC, every Wait time. A sec. What's the A Triple C? A Triple C is like the consumer uh, watchdog. Oh, uh, gotcha. So, like, if you have any <laughs> if any issues, uh, let's say you bought off, like, I don't know, a camera online, the yeah. guy never ended up sending right, it to right, you, right. Yeah, okay. and you can't resolve it. So that's the organization that's going to help you out, like gotcha, pre, gotcha. like actually doing legal proceedings. But so um, they're basically, uh, well, I don't know, the, the ACCC doesn't have much to do with it, but like uh, an Australian court has basically ordered that um, Google and Facebook or any other search engine for that matter has to pay the media outlets that they cite every time. So if they're using ABC and they put it up on their um, yeah, search engine, right. then um, the ABC is going to get a cut of it. The thing is, this is like one of, Australia is like the only major country that has done it. I can't remember what it was. Good idea. Well, so look, the it's a little complicated because I can't remember exactly where it was, but I remember reading another study about this where they tried to do this somewhere else too. And what's happened is, and then this is open interpretation if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. What ended up happening was that Google and Facebook didn't use mainstream media outlets that much. They started using other media outlets that they don't have to pay for, which means that there was kind. So every time, like, if you go on like um, Google right now and you type in, I don't know, whatever, like, whatever news Bow. story that you type in, most likely you're gonna get like the ABC or like the God, yeah. like big media outlets before. Ask Jeeves. Um, what's the, the the thing is like eventually um, they're not gonna do that. It's gonna be somewhere right at the bottom because they don't necessarily want people to clicking it because every time people click on that, uh, Google has to pay a certain amount of money to um, whatever news organization. Right, right, right. It is important because like the media, media was just like hemorrhaging money, right? Because with all this internet stuff, there's, so they're finding new ways of um, sourcing revenue, which is, which is a good thing, which is not necessarily a bad thing because obviously Google is getting too big and, and these other organizations are losing money. But I think uh, a repercussion of that would be that um, less people would be reading ABC because it would just not show up on your search. Exactly. Which is a right, good okay. thing so or a bad thing, a depending on how you look at it. decision by the libs. Well, they must have done it because they got so much pressure from the Murdoch press to sign off on this. Yeah, the Murdoch press is... In, but, like, this was actually a court decision, so the... Yeah, but who stacks the court? Yes, that is also true. And, and yeah, it, more than the liberals, it was basically Murdoch, like one man who wanted this to happen. And, and there, I remember be there's been a battle there. about this for saying, months behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. And Facebook has been sending a lot of their lobbyists here, and obviously they lost out because the libs know who's boss. Mm. But, <laughs> yeah, and this what, is what's Murdoch? really exciting. Is that who you mean? Precisely. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> just, just checking. Just, just checking. For those of you playing at home, <laughs> um, that was just a test. It yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was. Um, I it, think. It, it, by the way, was, ABC, the ABC is exempt. Everyone's saying no mm. cash for them. The ABC is exempt. Oh yeah, because it's a public <sighs> broadcaster. No, Fair enough. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I wanted their resources drained. Yeah. It's, it's, it's because it's like it's not necessarily a uh, completely. That makes sense, but not necessarily all the Murdoch. Uh, me- yeah. Actually, not the Murdoch media. Yeah, no, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. That's yeah, true. yeah. Um, we'll see. The, the The interesting thing about this is like um, this is very new, and no other country of significance. I can't remember who it was, but it was like a bullshit it was place, France, wasn't it? So, but it wasn't even. I think I can't. I don't remember who it was, but like it was someone. And then, um, but Australia is like I think it's going to be the testing ground where they're going to see how this works. Mm. And um, oh, it's not going to work. Well, it's just not push people like me and Michael West up further in the algorithm yeah. because we won't have to get paid, yeah. dude. But that's which mad. is a good thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's sick. fantastic. Hell For you, it's good. But like, gizzle. can you imagine that? Uh, so the two examples that you've taken is yourself and Michael West, who are both very trustable characters. What about Gary Orsom? He's going to be pushed. Gazzy. up too. 
Oh no! Show your shirt. Come on, straighten it out. Shoot up from about an average of two thousand views a video to two and a half. Yeah. Yes, Gary. Or like, you know, fallen off the uh, his content wagon. But Christ, I feel bad about that. Who doesn't? He's just so good. He is one of the only channels I have seen that is predicted in the future to decrease in subs. How do you know that? (laughs) Wait, you actually think that? Yeah, it's from Social Blade or whatever it's called. (laughs) What What is that? Like some sort of website that's like we analyze your analytics and then we. (laughs) <laughs> well dude i mean if he really wants to bump the numbers back up again there's an easy way to do it more foo fighters covers yeah i know foo fighters have what like 10 fucking albums yeah gaz you just need to learn this people can't handle the truth you're serving out yeah <laughs> jesus christ yeah well maybe it'll help holes worthy life so i'm on board too as i was saying before i can hear that shirt I can hear those <laughs> graphics. Just oh, it's they're so cheap. But that's because like you can hear I everything, Miss Love. You're a psychic. Yeah, I know, but that's loud. That's the loudest voice in the room. <laughs> Miss Psychic playing. That's the one taking up the biggest bubble. Absolutely. Just like mm. grrr, crunch, crunch. <laughs> Miss Love, what's up? What's this uh, David Lieby story? David Lieberhart? Is that Lieberhart, what you mean? Lieberhart, yeah. Is that people are like? Why are you asking mean, about that? How do you know about that? Well, a man, <laughs> camera, uh, our patron. <laughs> While we're on the topic of patron, yeah, join the upload crew, guys. This uh, up the, late, uh, yeah, up late. <laughs> can you can you guys do it? Blind and him? deaf. Um, the upload. It's okay. He's he's he's, he's, he's he got confused. He thought uh, it was a game. He thought it was a game. That's a one man club. Uh, oh, do you want to do you want to you you make the announcement? Well, up late. He's the, the big one. The Patreon, which is season two finishing. Oh, that's right. I thought it was Rudd versus Gillard. That's right. If you didn't have they a are specific a- labor history in one pod. No, that is on again. there as well. But <laughs> That's on the list too. But let's... let's, let's, let's what, what, but what's season two? I, do I, I feel me in. <laughs> well, season two is about to end. No, it's not. What? It's still good. I think what? I know. What I'm talking about Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've still got five or something. Do yeah, but they, they don't know yeah. anything about what's going to happen soon. Dude, this light. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You're not me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, you go on. Do Patreon um, topics? So and look, yes, we they do. Sorry, lightning. Someone. Wait, is... Miss Love. One sec. Sorry. Sorry. Um, we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> fucking pushy people on the internet. Go on. We're basically look this this we're gonna not be in the studio after four episodes because the guys have been great. Um, we were commissioned by Twitch for um, two seasons, actually one season, and they extended it for another one. So we're very grateful. Unless they extend it again, you never know. Well, that would work. But so what we're basically doing, so after four episodes, we're not going to have this incredible studio and we're not going to have the the boys, <laughs> but... We will have a better studio. Uh, and by better, we mean... We're making our own studio. A Pakistani jail cell. <laughs> Yes. How yes. is that not a better studio? It has. Oh, <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> so we're making we're making our studio, which is obviously well depend. Like it's maybe it's not going to be as fancy, but it'll it'll be good, and we're going to try to make it good. That's a studio where like Jordan's going to film his other stuff yeah, too, and, and guys, we're going to we really need the money for that screen in the background that the Young Turks have waving the American flag. Yo, uh, okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what we what we would really appreciate is if you join the the up late uh, pod yep. system, right? Yeah. That's yeah, going to yeah. you guys have been great and like on, honestly because of that we have reached this point where we're able to make a studio because on, before we wouldn't we would have just gone back to like doing audio only. But now because of you guys we are able to actually get the studio so we would really appreciate if you subscribe to the Uplate podcast, you get like a f- uh, not a free, you get a paid podcast yeah, every Yeah, but you get a week, bonus podcast. Which is actually really good. It's very filthy. It's something that like, it's basically uh, us talking about what we would normally talk about, assuming that no one was here. So it goes into like personal stuff more than political stuff. And it's I think- basically that that uh, naked news show that used to be on the 90s. Yeah. yeah. It's worth checking out. And like ask your friends who, are, cause who have already uh, subscribed to it or, you know, like get a review of how it is and we would really appreciate <gasps> your support. Shit. Someone yeah, just- pretty much if you just want to hear more about our ejaculation habits, then have I got the pod for you? Hey, hey, listen, someone just said, can we donate things to, for you guys to decorate the studio with? That's, Hell yes. That's nearly can. as good as doing uh, what 
our good friends as podcasters, which is way more effort and uh, way harder work, like animating but it depends what characters. It is. No, well, maybe it's just like, this is a photo of my vagina. What's Put it a, in the background. Yeah. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? <laughs> We're going to frame it. It's going to be filthy <laughs> anyway. So, like, there's nothing wrong with that. But depending on what kind of vagina you have, some are better than others. Oh, yeah, God. okay, yeah, yeah. Dude, if you know you're what? a 60-year-old homeless woman, oh, I'm very you interested. You know what's fucked? So I saw this BuzzFeed uh, video. <laughs> what? I saw this BuzzFeed video. By the way, BuzzFeed is dead, but this video has, like, fucking million views or something. It was this one chick who was uh, insecure about the way her vagina looks. Yeah. I can't remember which one was the good vagina and which one was the bad vagina because, like, honestly, I don't know what it is for you guys. We kind of don't give a fuck. I don't remember. Like, I've never looked at a vagina. And no, go, oh, some vaginas scare me. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... There's this one porn what star that I used to really like, and then I looked at it up close and I thought, mm, I'm just going to go back to watching her do anal like I do. <laughs> Couldn't <act. laughs> Damn. Yeah, but well, anyway. I, I don't, I didn't, I honestly, for some reason, did not pay attention to like the way a vagina looks. Feels is different. Anyway, so um, <laughs> so it says this. So she was like going in this huge thing. Like so many women are like insecure about their way, and and I should like it makes sense because like guys are insecure about their dicks too. But I just for some reason never assume that that's an issue for women, because I don't know like. With, like, dicks, you can see, oh, big dick, small dick, good dick. Like, for some reason, all vaginas in my head are the same. <laughs> I mean, look, yeah. they're not, there's yeah. not as much differentiation nah. between... Yes, there is. Is there? Okay. Yeah, Christ. some of them look like clams. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, like, Let's, I mean, uh, really, as, as a male, you don't really want to be having sex with an anemone. So oh, all right, some look. people do want to. You, you, some people do have the right to feel insecure about it. M- moving on from that, small peenies. Moving on from that, I mean, like, yeah, Patreon, hook us up. It's gonna be a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, in fact, that was just a preview a to the up late one. Yeah, um, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> and like that's actually actually the vagina story is basically all the up late podcasters. It's three dollars a month. It's good, and it would really help us. It does. We we are. Yeah, we, we've gone we've gone from like the early days of like exclusively paying out. Anyone who helps us on Patreon and be like, huh, losers, to like being like somewhat We've normal human strategy. beings. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not abusing you guys for helping us out. So, uh, you know, cheers for that. Let's just smash through some of this because there's some reoccurring questions here. And thanks. Someone just gave three dollars USD. Someone, this fella keeps asking. Wait, what's what? his name? What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, look, it's not worth three dollars. Just no. <laughs> wait, and he's gone. Wait, whoever you were, yeah. I'm sorry, Thank Miss Love. Oh no, I found him again. Michael, Michael Risseru, Michael. Uh, that's, a, yeah, that's your mate from before. Uh, doesn't. Oh, wow, this Michael, guy. Don't you Michael, Michael Rickow. Pay what did you like up late? Wait, I swear I've seen you everywhere. <laughs> wait, how do we know who's our mate from before? The man that keeps on giving. Oh, the icon. All right, that's it. You're going to have to get it. Like no, it really paper, is true, you. you know? Yeah, well, you're going to have to get... We'll send him some that old That Play-Doh principle, just the top 20%. I think he'll... Michael's in the top 20% of that 20%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I go. forgot, like, if you do sign up for uh, Patreon, uh, Jordan's going to give you a Remy. Just if I ever meet you, you can't start nah, give me that so Chinese high. thing. You can't like, start next again? time when COVID is over and you go to one of his shows, just like line up but with your ass facing him. <laughs> In fact, I'll just do it now. I'll just get out some glad wrap and that should be safe enough. <laughs> um. Dude, that's a story. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, I can't go into that. But like, listen to Joe Rogan's podcast with David Chow. He has some crazy stories. Yes. <laughs> I like Joe Rogan. Do you? Seriously, though, I do. Hope you do too. So anyway, are you writing a letter? Um, <laughs> could you guess that the guy with that schmo vest on likes Joe Rogan? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, man! Uh, look, best Lang book to read. They want to ask: Is there only one? What's it called? No, there is three biographies that he wrote, what is and they he are. Said? He wrote three biographies about just, himself. Just list them because the guy, I don't even know what they are. I got one for my birthday, which is I remember. Thank you very much, Rat Boy, and the. No, rest but of like, the didn't some fucking? Uh, didn't one of the MLK send that book? I think so. Oh, this is so Someone from the so MLK, sad. and this is incredible because there is very few copies left of Jack Lang's three autobiographies. Yeah. And I got one of them. Hell, what's one of the guys sent it to Jordan as a birthday gift. 
And uh, I think... And it was the best birthday gift I've ever got. I would have preferred Patreon, but the, all right, whatever. <laughs> and it's got I a saw- sign on it. There's this guy called the Dome Kang. Is that him? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, okay. What, did There's you name no it? no way he's watching this. Did you name it? Did you name the book? Hmm? Did you name... I remember is one of them. Yeah. These things are something... And Let's I can't see. remember what the other one is, but he has three books... They're all different parts of his, like, oh, yeah, the turbulent gear. So that's Hell yeah, really sound, about the... They sound boss. Two people ask me, favourite Brian Eno album, favourite Slayer album. I don't know those motherfuckers, so uh, let's just go with the greatest hits. The other... other, <laughs> the other uh, actually, the one with Angel of hey, Death. Isn't that everyone's best album? <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. By definition. Uh, two topics... There are a lot of questions for Kevin. Talk about Kevin v. Julia. But also, oh, yeah, you, look, but also, let's, also let's what, what is Agresco Beasters BNA? <laughs> Does that ring any what? bells? Let's just ignore that one. Let's make a rule. If you have a, are if you, you have reading a, Apple terms and conditions at this point? <laughs> <laughs> if you have a question, it has to be in English. Let's do the Kevin Rudd. <laughs> or it Kevin could Rudd be in Urdu. Video. Um, yeah, uh, what, 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 what was the Kevin and Julia thing? Agostero B stars? Listen, like, let him. Sorry. What's the Kevin and Julia thing? Okay. Keep this for now until y- that you segment You do realize you're on air. <laughs> on air. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what does that mean? Let me just consult Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the matrix. <laughs> does that He's ring back the- at it. <laughs> he just looked down again. I'm staring. Go. His two loves in life. T. And randoms asking you about bands. <laughs> <laughs> I am yeah. proud of Mr. No, come on, Miss. Come on, right. take it away. Take it away. You've got to be in the zone. No, no, I'm in the zone. What are you no, I want to hear about <laughs> Julia not, not that Gillard zone. versus no, I'm other in, zones. I'm in this zone. Take it off him. Oh, no, no, no. That's not okay, happening. Just, just, just go on. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> why am I a mum? It's not happening. Come on. Into it. This is unbelievable. You've read a book about this, The Power of Off. Yeah. <laughs> Just read that recently. But we're but on the net. We're a on the net. Not giving a fuck. Dude, The Power <laughs> of Off chick would be like, well, if you're, <laughs> if you're on Twitch, make sure you get great poppy seed cake recipes on air. So, like, dude, that's, that's irrelevant for this situation. Okay. All right. So anyway, just, just ignore ignore that and tell us to get one. No one's talking about it anymore. As soon as he gets on a poppy seed cakes, you just realize, okay, his brain isn't in the studio anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not most of the time. Let's be honest. Um, Rod V. Gillard. I'm Who's going to call it out now? I know where this is going. Well, what do you think? Where do you think it's going? Gillard is your fighter for women's rights and if you disagree <laughs> you're a sexist <laughs> <laughs> and all your other points are valid because you're a sexist that would be my point <laughs> <laughs> no even dumber she did the misogyny speech yeah can we make it stupider what's what's a dumber defense of julia Gillard? she has a fat ass her that is boyfriend dumb, uh, was so rude is. to her once and she still made it to the <laughs> prime minister. Do you know how difficult it is when they sometimes no, tell but look, you, you off? You can see the difference in the prime ministers. I mean, look, you know, recently, spending so much time on Twitter, Kevin Rudd was talking about uh, preventing nuclear war between China and the US and the path forward to that. He did this very concise geopolitical summary of the current state of the globe and how to avoid catastrophe. (laughs) That was his tweet. All these important people from across the world, UN representatives, whatnot, saying, "Mm, very insightful, Mr. Rudd. I really enjoyed your paper on this. And you have Malcolm Turbull in there and his response is, I'm really enjoying your new beard, Kevin. It looks very handsome. Oh. <laughs> Malcolm Turnbull is... Is he also like an estrogen guy? <laughs> Fucking... I don't know. Do you think he is? What? Turnbull? Yeah. What do, you think? what do you think? He's estrogen? an estrogen man, isn't he? No. Testosterone. Oh, who knows? Could be a builder. I think he's a builder. Can I just like just say something... Um, like you can continue, I promise. But I feel like I want to say this. 
Um, if you have like an adverse opinion of China, if you're in, and that's okay, that's your opinion. What I would no, recommend so. you to do is like, um, <laughs> is actually Kevin Rudd has done like a series of lectures throughout the world where he talks about that particular issue of like how to avoid war. You should check it out. I'm just gonna give a Kevin Rudd a plug. So they're really good, and he's very insightful about this. Maybe, maybe like you'll learn something that you haven't. Sorry, go on, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but look, you look at the books that Kevin Rudd recommends. They're all heavy, hard-hitting, global politics books, uh, hard economics. It's all heady, intelligent stuff. You look at what Julia Gillard recommends. Why it's hard for women to get up in the workplace. How do women own the next century? It's all that crap. <laughs> that you see BuzzFeed journalists uh, read. I love She's just like, th th there is a massive reason why you... I'm not on this train. <laughs> oh, come on, as if you're not on that train. Backing out. I am, but I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I just okay, all right, so you're on this train, but it is the last train to puss on. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like literally at the edge. <laughs> like, <laughs> puss on. Puss. <laughs> Um. Yeah. She, <laughs> so what you're saying? Do you like a lot? Isn't a dumb person though. I'll give her that much. Mm. There is. I don't think she's particularly smart. Comparing to Kevin, I think Rudd, Kevin just Rudd is a stock like standard lawyer, and I don't regard lawyers as particularly intelligent. I think that Kevin Sorry. Rudd was a once in a generation leader. And we squandered him. No, he's he's very intelligent. Um, he uh, was. Rudd. This is it's like, just not, not fair because of the time that he was given, right? But he was just like how we had uh, Goff, and he was kind of the bastion of the labor movement for that epoch. And then you have uh, Keating coming on after him. Rudd was ours. He just wasn't given the opportunity to flourish due to the economic circumstances surrounding him, and also just the in-party politics. Mm. Can I? But, I've got a comment that 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 is a very good one for you to argue, because I think it's like yeah, that's a good one. Some uh, Bronson PM has said, Jordan, you can counter this. Gillard was a superior PM to Rudd. Rudd is overpraised for Australia's stability during the GFC. Most of the stimulus was unnecessary. We were so underexposed because of low debt going into the crisis. Wait, can you read the last bit? Sorry again. Uh, what part? Low debt. Uh, most. Uh, low debt. Okay. Oh, dude, I just, okay. Rudd is overpraised. He said most of the stimulus was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. We were so under, sorry, sorry, can you just continue, sorry. we were so underexposed because of low debt going into the crisis. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, this is Australian talking points. This is how they're trying to sully the legacy of Kevin Rudd. If you are pointing that thing out of just like, oh, it was unnecessary how much he gave in. Well, what's your excuse for COVID then? Because that's like five times the, the, the stimulus price anyway. But look, if you're arguing that the stimulus was unnecessary, what they're always saying is we should have had a stimulus like New Zealand's. Go look at New Zealand's economy after the GFC and look at Australia's economy after the GFC. We were the only country in the world, definitely developed, that yeah. reported growth after the global financial crisis every other economy in recession so what are you why are you saying that it was unnecessary uh because he doesn't know what he's talking about give me exactly. one give me <laughs> there's another one me, there's another me, one okay give me tell me one reputable economist that says that kevin rudd's stimulus was um unnecessary and i'll give you a million <laughs> who say that that was probably the best decision anywhere in the world uh, the best decision to counter the GFC. Yeah. In fact, so Nobel good... Nobel Prize winning economist that, uh, the, the versus recession, the Australian. Yeah, uh, so good that like post-COVID, every country in the world did it because they knew Kevin Rudd's example. Yeah. I'm way, not exaggerating yeah. this. Yeah. People mention him all the time all over the world mm. because of his straight $1,000 stimulus. It, so much so that someone like Trump did the same thing when this happened. Mm. Peace. And Donald Trump even was uh, praising Kevin Rudd's stimulus back in the day. This was this was across the board. We're talking everyone from Donald Trump to the U.S. Reserve Bank, whatever that one was called. I can't remember. Federal, Federal Reserve. Reserve yeah. uh, we're talking like the IMF. We're talking Nobel Prize winning economists, lefty economists like Joseph Stiglitz. You go look at the list of distinguished economists across the globe that are praising Kevin Rudd's stimulus package. It may have been controversial then, what Jordan is saying right now, but it's definitely not controversial now. No one disagrees with Ryan. That. The other thing about like low debt um, is that, look, it's true that Australia had relatively low debt. And the other thing was that we had this uh, constant demand from China, which helped... 
But that's not something that goes against Kevin Rudd. No, that that's doesn't go like against Kevin Rudd. That was just circumstances, we just like the GFC was circumstances. Yeah, exactly. Who but and, and on top of that, there's a lot of other countries that are resource rich that went into recession. Yeah. So it wasn't just China. Oh, you know, right. Because we had a really solid, really fast uh, stimulus package that worked instantly. You, yeah. won't, you won't like this comment, but Ryan CL45, Gilas gave us NDIS, Gonski, carbon tax, mining tax, and yes, she was a fantastic representation, representation of a female leader. That's kind of true, actually. <laughs> I'll, I'll, like Those are good things. No. Why? No, they're not. <laughs> because the NDIS was started by Kevin Rudd. It was his uh, leadership summit or whatever it was called. When he first came into office, he got a thousand of the brightest minds to Canberra together, and obviously the Murdoch Press ran this huge campaign of, I can't believe that he's spending $40 million to have this two-day meeting. But... Out of that came the uh, National Organ Bank, mm. where we have increased the number of people getting vital organ transplants double. It's doubled since then because you're able, you're able to say like, oh, okay, this person needs it in the Northern Territory and it's all linked up. That was because of Kevin Rudd's summit. The other big thing that came out of it, NDIS. There was also just a bunch of other vast improvements in policy that never even get any mentions. But the NDIS was there, and he was the one that was implementing it. It's just that, yeah, Gillard passed it, but it takes a while for these things to be written up in policy. It doesn't just happen like, oh, okay, here's the proposal passed. It takes a while to formulate these things. If you, actually, if you're going to give anyone credit for the NDIS, it should be Bill Shorten. Will what? Shorten was the real mastermind he was behind really? it because he was, he was the Minister for Disability Services and he Shit. did a stellar job of putting that together. But it's a very Kevin Rudd program. was the one that got that summit together and said, that's a good idea, uh, Bill, you handle that. Right. That was under right. him. Um, what were the other ones? But nonetheless, uh, it was, it's a very good program. We respect what, the other points? Good, it, yeah, it's great. The other points? And, yeah, credit to Gillard for passing it, but she didn't formulate that. The points were... The carbon tax? Uh, carbon tax was the stupidest move in modern political history. Why do you say that? And it, because no, look, it, as Kevin Rudd was pointing out, it's such a good point. She did it because the Greens said, we're not going to join a coalition government with you if you, you don't do pass the carbon tax. Forgetting, what the fuck are the Greens going to do otherwise? What, they're going to form coalition with the Liberals? No, yeah. you tell them to fuck off and you put them in their place. They're the junior members. If Julia Gillard was a musician, she'd be Lars Ulrich. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. Was that to Michael him. again? Shout out. That the no, 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 that was, that was hand jobs for Ewoks. Hell yeah, dude. Great name. <laughs> Great name. Um, but what about, okay, the only other points that they that there were was the uh, the mining tax and Gonski. Mining tax, passed under Rudd. I will give credit actually to Wayne Swan for that, but he bitched it in the end. But... Wayne Swan came up, he said that he did this massive tax review and it was just obvious that there needed to be a tax on mining. Kevin Rudd was saying, why are you doing this to me in my first term? <laughs> this is going to sink us. <laughs> but credit to him, he passed it. Mm. While he was waging war with the Murdoch press, while he was waging war with the banks, that's going to sink a Labor government and it did. And it did. But And it was definitely the mining tax that did sink it. But when it came to Julia Gillard with the mining tax, that was, that was really watered down from what Kevin Rudd was proposing. Why? Because they were trying to save government. Now, I would have done exactly the same thing if I was in Julia Gillard's position, but Kevin Rudd was willing to take that to the people. He was fighting for it and he was winning the war. Because it's important. He, it was important. As unpopular as it may be, both carbon tax and mining tax are extremely important yeah. for Australia. And when it comes to the emissions success. trading scheme, if we pass the emissions trading scheme, which anybody that ever says that the Greens are the party of the environment, three letters, E-T-S, they voted against it. That is the worst decision in modern Australian political history. What was history. their rationale? Was it just like, oh, it doesn't matter of like if you're able to like trade it, it's the act itself that's They were saying that, that it's too weak. Well, I've got news for you. It's better than nothing. Yeah. And on top of that, you just put the mechanism in place. You show business that it's actually not affecting your profit. In fact, it's increasing your profit. And then you can increase the price from there. But you have to get the mechanism in place. You have to make the business community okay with it. Otherwise, they're going to make sure that the Liberals are in for three terms, which is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And we will never have a price on carbon now because it's just become so toxic as a result of the carbon tax. Yeah. The carbon tax was too much. Which the carbon tax, tragic. you can't just put that in. 
It's that's the result is three what terms percent, of the Liberals. What percent did they want it on? Uh, uh, the the carbon tax was it five or was that uh, like what percent? Uh, in terms of a reduction? It, it they they were aiming for a five percent reduction by twenty twenty, but it was looking like it was going to reduce carbon emissions by fifteen to twenty percent. It was a strong deterrent for carbon emissions. Yeah. True. But the aim was to reduce not- carbon emissions by 5% by 2020 because it was just about getting that trajectory going and implementing all of these industries and businesses to start reducing carbon emissions by the time that it was 2020 so that after that it could just be this ski slope of down by 2030. Right. We don't have any of that now. Instead, what we have is increasing carbon emissions in 2020. Can I also just yeah. say, like, that is not uh, that is uh, obviously one of the big reasonings for a carbon tax and a mining tax, but that's not the only one. There's other reasons why these taxes both are very important. Number one, it first of all helps propel um, renewable energies, right? So yeah. if you cut the subsidies, it becomes more expensive. So that's just a business uh, free market sense. Second reason is it was you can ask the WA government now, even the the Liberal government. Um, they couldn't cash in on the mining tax and and they ended up not having any money. WA went through a recession after the mining boom. That should not have happened because you could have had like a huge treasure trove from all this milking once it goes away. So it was just a bad economic move. Thirdly, the the, the taxes are very important because it removes Australia from this dependency on just the carbon economy. It eventually would lead us to diversify our sources of revenue. So it's, I know the climate change thing is extremely important and that's what, but that's not the only, there's a multifaceted advantages of both the carbon tax mining tax. And it's a real, it's a tragedy that like, they're so toxic now that I don't think any government will be willing to take it up. Never. Sad. That ship sailed. Yeah. Now, but really, we are just looking at things like NEG, which is the fourth or fifth best alternative available to us, and even that's not getting passed under the Libs. But if we get the Labor Party in, they'll at least pass that. There's other ways to reduce our emissions to 28 45% by 2030. But actually, now, 45%. Can't do that by 2022 to 2030. It's too much of a slope and there's just been too much time in inaction. That's not going to happen. Yeah. So all I'm saying is Rudd is a visionary. He had a vision for this country. I really don't think Julia Gillard did. She was a Labor politician, which is great. Always happy that there's a Labor politician in power as opposed to a Liberal politician. But you know what I would like better than just a Labor politician in power? A Labor leader, a Labor visionary. Mm. That yeah. was Kevin Rudd. He yeah. had a vision of where to put us into the future and that's why he was ousted. The reason that he was removed and the reason that Julia Gillard was imposed had nothing to do with faction fighting. Well, faction fighting, but as uh, Ali will back me up on this, um, I know for a fact that Kevin Rudd hates me talking about this, but I'm <laughs> going to say it anyway. He was ousted by the US government. He went against... This, this is a minor point, but he was pretty much just saying what Israel is currently doing is pretty fucked to the Palestinians. So obviously the Israel lobby freaked out. Dude, I actually out. have an inside scoop on that. Not what? in terms of Kevin Rudd, but in terms of uh, Bob Carr and Julia Gillard. So I went to one of these uh, at UNSW. Bob Carr came to UNSW and he had like a little lecture thing. And uh, he was like very open about everything. So one of the things that he was asked was um, the pa- uh, Israel-Palestine and the settlement issue. And he was saying, coming from the horse's mouth, he was saying that I was convincing Julia Gillard to vote against Israel because this was against the interests of not just Australia and the world community, but against Israel too, because it reduces like any um, possibility of a two-state solution. Um, that's a, look, a whole different thing of like what the two-state solution and all of that stuff is. But, but he was saying that Julia Gillard said, oh, absolutely no, there's no fucking way. And he was saying, I think this is important. I think we need to, even with our friends, sometimes we need to make a point that look, we'll support you, but not with everything. And um, Julia Gillard was, uh, was saying, nah, there's no fucking way I'm going to let you do that. Eventually, there was a bit of a fight, and the compromise was abstaining. She still wouldn't let him do it. So she said, you can abstain, but uh, you can't vote against Israel. Yeah. And this plays into the whole facet, which is that Julia Gillard was installed because she was very pro-U.S., she yeah. was a US simp. You listen to her and she says, hey, now I'm a bit of a CIA. nerd for US politics. She basically just watches Kyle Kalinske. <laughs> I think that's CIA what she does in her spare plan. time. But honestly, CIA plan? 
she wasn't a CIA plant, but CIA plants in the Labor Party definitely right. agitated the Labor Party to vote Kevin Rudd out. Mm. There was no reason to vote Kevin Rudd out. This is all outlined in his book. This is the difference. You can go read Julia Gillard's biography and you can read Kevin Rudd's biography. Kevin Rudd's biography is just minute to minute. He has, to use YouTube terminology, the receipts. <laughs> Julia Gillard doesn't. You read her rendition of the outing of Kevin Rudd. It is piss weak and, as Kevin Rudd points out, it changes all the time. Kevin Rudd's doesn't. He has just minute by minute, this is what happened. Here's the, here's the interview where she said this. In this interview, she's giving a completely different reason. Mm. Um, but... The reason that Kevin Rudd, uh, yeah, okay, so there was that. There was also the fact that Kevin Rudd was saying we should have a more sane relationship with China and shouldn't just be the plaything of the US. Uh, and then the other thing was that he implemented the mining tax. Now, the two things that the US actually care about when it comes to their proxy states is uh, foreign policy and resources. They don't care how you run your schools and your hospitals. That doesn't affect them at all. They just want your resources and they want you to go to war for them. And Kevin Rudd was saying, no. Yeah, there was a. That's why he was removed. So there was a big uh, during when uh, the Obama when Obama first came into power, there was this uh, massive um, lobby in the U.S. and they weren't wrong. They were arguing that um, our focus on the Middle East is is completely useless, unnecessary, and unrequired. Whereas the bigger issue is in Asia. So you need to move your foreign policy towards Asia, which means that you need to contain China. Uh, Kevin Rudd was of the opinion that um, Australia sh just shouldn't blindly side with them. He was saying that we should be an arbiter between these two. And there was a way that both of you can rise together and Australia can play a role in it. Um, yeah, the US wasn't too keen on it. May I? And then what May happened I? as soon as... as so just one sec yeah, before, yeah. because this is very important. Yeah. Kevin Rudd ousted. What happens? Obama comes to Australia and announces pivot to Asia. Yeah, that's true. The entire reforming after. of the global strategy of the US announced right here. She goes over to America and makes the most simp Menzian speech in Congress in the US about how much she loves America and how it's the shining light on the hill. You're representing the Labor Party. That's the fucking light on the hill. Yeah. Not this global empire octopus that you're now representing. Now... I would, as I've said before, I would much prefer if there was, uh, you know, like a, a puppet of the US controlling Australia that is under the Labor banner. That's obviously going to be preferable, but you have to commend Kevin Rudd for his balls. And the difference, the difference when you read all of the biographies of the other prime ministers and they meet the US president and they have this celebrity thing of like, ooh, I met Will I Am. It's like that. Mm -hmm. They're just like, I met Obama. He's very nice yeah. and very charming. Smells lovely. <laughs> all that kind of stuff, right? Julia Gillard, exactly the same thing. You read Kevin Rudd's biography, it's so boss. He just walks in and he's just like, yeah, so I met Obama at the, the G20 conference. I walked up to him and I said, hey, you're, just, uh, you're screwing it up in the Middle East there a bit, Barack. Let me give you some tips, <laughs> you know? <laughs> May I? May I interject? <laughs> yeah. You're not going to like this, but uh, the net moves very fast and Twitch is exploding. In that time has just been exploding they are demanding that we call Rudd and they've started a hashtag called Rudd and Tug. Rudd and Tug. Wait, call him? Or yeah, call they, him? Wanted, they want Jordan to call Rudd live and they're calling it Rudd and Tug. Rudd and Tug. We well, that's a very good hashtag, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, but we'll look, do it wants at our new they want studio. A, they want him, uh, they want, Please. they want, they, they really want you to call Rudd. I don't, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. At any it. point in your life? No. Yeah, I'll call him, but I'm not going to call him on air. Don't do it now. Sorry, it's not going to happen now. <laughs> no, no, not but now. But it's going to happen. But could, we could potentially could organize a phone in, in come on. Uh, no, but you know what? I, how do you how do you think about this? What do you think about this Twitch? There's two things that I really want to get on the record for Kevin Rudd because I haven't read his other book, but I'm about to soon. But that guy had a rough upbringing. Really, I want to get him on and interview him and just ask him about that. Got to happen. That it's formed happen. his view of the world because I think that that was formative. Probably. Um, but the other thing is I really want to hear his rendition of Rudd v. Gillard because I feel like Gillard gets the free run of the press. Why? Because she stepped away from criticising the Murdoch press when she left government. Mm. Uh, Kevin Rudd still fights it to this day, so he's not getting any favourable press. Hey, can we Julia add another Gillard question is. into, like, if you do it? 
And please, let's do it. Like, this is genuinely something I you want to know. You have to do it in the pod. Just do uh, it. Yeah, just do it. Whatever. Like, but uh, I'd like it if it was on the pod, too, so I can just, like, listen to it. Um, True. I want to I wanna ask Kevin Rudd, or you should ask Kevin Rudd, um, how the inner workings of the Chinese Communist Party really are. Because he would have insight. He's hung oh, out yeah. with them a lot. That would be interesting. He, I want him to, like, like where power really lies and how power functions within China. Yeah, that would be interesting. Um, yeah, he would I'd, have be, I'd be keen to know about that. that. But anyway, As would yeah. Keating, actually. Um, 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 but the other thing that I want to ask yeah. you about is, uh, I, I no, actually look, I don't need to talk about that. But it was just it was Wayne Goss. I really wanted to ask him about that as well. But um, yeah, back to Rudd v. Gillard. Then you listen to them when they're talking about why he was ousted. Rudd was ahead in the polls. <laughs> First off, Julia Gillard was barely in any of the polls in her entire governing history ahead. Mm, yeah. And she was versing Tony Abbott. Mm. Walk in the park. Bill Shorten was beating Tony Abbott. Yeah. Well, Tony Abbott was so shit that his own party beat him really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't believe, like, I kind of felt bad for him, actually. Like, he should have gotten... Kevin Rudd obviously should have gotten a run, and that's a big tragic story. But like, even Tony Abbott, dude, like, give him fucking three years. Like, he elected himself prime <laughs> minister. You know, <laughs> deserves three years. And then like, yeah, great success, Malcolm Turnbull. Yeah, now things are great. Yeah. Yeah. We're I mean, also when it says that uh, you know Julia Gillard passed the carbon tax, she was the one pushing. Her and Wayne Swan were the ones pushing for Kevin Rudd to drop the ETS. They were the ones saying, no, nope, you have to drop it. And Kevin Rudd had to cede due to party pressure to uh, just, you know, postpone it a couple of years from what he was supposed to do. But then the other thing is, Julia Gillard at first was saying that the reason that we've gotten rid of him is because the government has lost its way. So I am now Prime Minister. What's changing? Absolutely nothing <laughs> except for Kevin Rudd is no longer Prime Minister. <laughs> then she started talking about this thing of just, uh, you know, like Kevin Rudd is a malignant narcissist or whatever the phrase was that she was using, that he's just unhinged. And this was the, the, uh, the narrative the that narrative. started getting spread in the Murdoch press. There was no mentioning of that before the Labor Party started making this character assassination because they had to posthumously uh, justify why they got rid of the most popular Prime Minister in Australian history. Was he? There was no reason for it, yeah. It was like that he, that, was he had, that he had was. poor... It, it started with poor management skills, but then it all just started leaking out that, no, he was a wizard managing things. Hmm. Uh, then it just came to, yeah, he was a psycho or whatever. And I like Kevin Rudd's response to it of, huh, I didn't realise that Julia Gillard as an industrial lawyer also had a degree in psychoanalysis. That's <laughs> <laughs> a, a good point. point. Fair, a point. fair point. 100% yeah. fair. Dude, I can tell you one thing. Even though I was saying, like, Julia Gillard isn't dumb, but, like, dude, when it comes to, like, intellectual capabilities, like, Kevin Rudd is so far ahead of Julia Gillard. I remember, find, like, when you mentioned how she went to U.S. Congress, I saw a lot of press releases from that, right? And uh, she was she went to schools, like, primary school in the U.S., like, what they would call elementary schools, and she would talk about, um, she would represent Australia, so she was talking about, like, Queensland had floods, and so one of the kids was asking, um, how big is Queensland? She she couldn't like fucking answer. Like uh, Obama came in and he was like, um, it's about the size of Texas. Mm. And then uh, and like the was like, okay, well the kids were like, okay, that makes sense. But I was like, it's like, dude. Yeah. So Obama knows more minister, about Australia. You should be That's able to like have yeah. a really good answer. You were just like, oh, it's big. It's like, if you think about it, H. <laughs> um, Do we have no, honestly, I'm telling you, you read the biographies of these two of people. It's honest. It's it's very, very obvious who's more intellectually capable than the other. Mm. In fact, Julia Gillard's was one of the dumbest biographies that I've read. It wasn't the dumbest. There's some liberal biographies that I've read. That just Which one was atrocious. the dumbest biography that you've ever read? <laughs> Look. Lazarus. I really man. liked Lazarus writing. Fuck, if I never but. hear about that book ever again, I'll be a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> but go on. But Lazarus Rising wasn't bad, was it? All right, we have to tell the story about. To tell listening. that story. Actually, we got a little bit right. We've got we've got some time. Tell that story. Like, I got a pee. Less than ten I got a pee. Tell us. We were driving to uh, <sighs> regional New South Wales. And Miss Love was getting really distraught and upset because we were listening to Lazarus Rising in audio form with John Howard reading it out. <laughs> he was reading his own autobiography. 
<laughs> and What's wrong with that? It's the That's greatest so awesome. inside joke because me and my little rat boy, we were pissing ourselves the whole time because the entire book is pretty much this. Bob Ross came to me and said that my statement, while true in essence, could have been delivered better. I took the criticism on board but decided that I had done a sufficient job. That's like this is just like it's like fifty hours of that. <laughs> I'm just like, just like, like him just saying like and and and, and yeah, very little, uh, very 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 little focus on policy throughout his entire eleven years. Always just about elections, and I had the feeling that Australia was yearning for me to make a statement about the flag, and I was proven right in two thousand and four. <laughs> That, right? So it's just always just about him vibing day. Australia. I know, it's amazing. And <laughs> so obviously... The Mr. was like, when is the solo coming? <laughs> yes. When, when you get the wire pedal out, Howard. <laughs> Fuck, at least just talk about rugby. But I thought that it was great because it's just... Uh, no, did you hear his statement on rugby? I must have been asleep for the rugby <laughs> It was. I, I, I look, think that the Australian public rewarded me for oh. saying that I enjoyed cricket oh. but didn't know much about rugby oh. league. They found the honesty refreshing Fuck. their leader. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mad and also, policy. Dude, you know what the best point is? I love this. Him basically justifying why he went into the Iraq war. Summary, I decided it was necessary to enter Iraq because George Bush Jr., was very nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, at least he's oh, being honest, dude. <laughs> yeah, true. At least he's being and honest. And you know what else I really like about him? He's just, he hates arrogance. He Does hates he? hates arrogance. He's oh, just a I really, I do think he's a down-to-earth, decent guy. That's he true. Probably I, didn't, is. I didn't know he hated He gives that. off yeah. that vibe. Dude, like the joggers that he uses to run, he doesn't care about how he's looking. <laughs> no, no he's, he does he's not. He's not, not a single vein, like not vain at all. And pretty much the only reason that he ever hates anyone, he'll always say very complimentary things about people of the Labor Party, except for Paul Keating. And that's just pretty much, Paul Keating was the opposite of George Bush Jr. He was very rude to me. That's why he doesn't like Oh, him. for fuck's sake. <laughs> no. Look, boys, we've got uh, you five... You finish the story. Oh, so anyway, oh, you, sorry, this yeah. was just going on and on. So it was just uh, him just talking about him vibing the electorate. Uh, just very brief chapters about this. Is, the GST was introduced here anyway. I had a meeting with Bob Ross where he said that I was being a bit arrogant. I took this to heart. There was that. So then he just goes and like everything and then it just comes to work choices and then there's six chapters on it going, here's why I think work choices was necessary. Yeah. He's really into work choices. <laughs> like surely there's no, not even a debate that work choices wasn't just purely to give corporations But it's also, power. that's the only that's, thing he's, he's done. Just, but yeah, he's, he's justifying that. that in the book. Going, Don't you see that it was giving more power to corporations and that's why it was necessary mm -hmm. that's pretty much what he's, he's just arguing from the other way he's saying the same thing as you but, but anyway yeah. while this is all happening these, these very boring recollections of his life in his office <laughs> Miss Love stops talking because he's just whining the whole time going oh turn it off <laughs> just a couple of tunes oh this sucks <laughs> and then we just realised he had to talk for half an hour and I said, do you think Miss Love's asleep? And I turned to the back and at that moment, he started snoring. So you just turn around and you hear... <laughs> <laughs> he farted while he was asleep. <laughs> and I just always have this image in my head of as soon as that happening, John Howard saying, I recall Miss Love Bella Bradley. <laughs> Farting while I was reading Lazarus Rising, I thought that this was uncouth. <laughs> and that's why he's in the same ranks as Paul Keating in, in my books. In Lazarus Rising 2, there's a chapter on the fart. The rudeness and of mislove. I do appreciate his libertarian views, but not his libertarian Ways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, we've got we've literally got three more minutes before we're kicked out. So really? Jordan, okay. 
I've got a question for you. Today is your birthday. You have turned... No, say it. No, yes. don't tell anyone. It's my secret. You have turned 21 today. Right. Wow. Oh, very good. And say it Say it like Can in hot tell? ones. Go, that camera, that camera, that yeah. camera. Tell us what you got yeah. going on that in your camera, life. That camera, that camera, and that camera. Tell us what you have learned throughout your life and what you can teach us now that you're a senior. No, now that you're 21. Yeah, you've got a gold Opal card now. Gold. Are you keen for schoolies? No, it's not happening. Are you a toolie? Yeah, I'm a st- toolie. I'm too old for that now. I'm no. 21. Do you uh, feel like yeah, sitting on yeah, your true. front yard and screaming at people? Is that like a thing that's happening? Yeah. No, 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 no. Confirm? <laughs> more and more recluse into my house. <laughs> How can I'm that like happen anymore? Deep in there. Yeah, you're very Just deep. Just go into the there. kitchen cupboard from now on Just and suck hole. moisture out of the pot. <laughs> <laughs> just just drink that really old Tabasco that I used half of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My food is Ajax. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I don't know. Look, all I've learned is, this is actually what I've learned. Read a lot of self-help, and then when you have enough confidence instilled from self-help, read a lot of childhood development so that that confidence is instantly taken away. <sighs> What's childhood development? Jesus. What do you mean? Childhood development oh, is just them, psychologists talking about how your early childhood influence you as a person and then you just realize you know. it goes further than Sam Harris's free will. It's Dude, just- I've got a question. Sorry, what? I know there's like two minutes, but I will have a quick right. question. I was having this uh, debate with um uh, with the girl that I'm seeing. So she was she was sorry. she was saying <laughs> no, that we sorry. were talking about like um like He's sorry that you didn't say that earlier. Earlier, yeah. Hitting kids. And uh, because she's a teacher and she had like some story of some kid um, who was um, of not like um, he was some Egyptian kid and he was saying how his dad would like sometimes spank him. And she was asking me, um, what are the ethnic protocols? Is that normal? Do I need to report this kind of situation? Right. So um, then we started getting into the talk and she was saying that hitting kids when they're super young before the age of seven is probably what you should do because that's when they can't reason and you have to like hit them to tell them, yeah, don't run across the street. There is an argument for that, yeah. And when they're like in their teens, they then then they're like old enough so you shouldn't hit them because you can reason with them. My opinion my thing was that no, it's the opposite. When they're a kid, you shouldn't hit them because they're a fucking child <laughs> and you're a grown human being and like their mind isn't formed yet and if they're running across the street, it's a curiosity thing. You don't want to be hitting them for that. Like you're a shit parent if you're not making sure that your kid is like kind of safe. But when they're a teenager, that's when like you should be able to hit them because that's when like they're going to like maybe go into drugs or something. Or like if you are like some fucking kid in Africa, you might want to take up guns and become a child soldier. Or like that's when you slap the fuck out of them and tell them, hey, calm this shit down. Yeah. What's your take on this? Sorry, this is a totally personal right. question. It's but who cares? Uh, you know what? I think mine goes deeper than that because I know kids that were beaten and I know kids that were – like I, I like, look, I know kids that were beaten. Some of them turned out to be exemplary. Others and turned out to be little shits. And you know what I think the, the key ingredient actually is? Love. Mm. But there's a, Wait, very, there's a very psychologically uh, specific definition of what love is. And that is uh, making decisions in the emotional development and benefit of the child. Whereas a lot of parents don't do that. A lot of parents just try and download what they want that kid to be and assign a role to yes, them. Yes. Whereas there's other parents that are trying to foster that child to be themselves, essentially. And those are the ones that end up having healthy ego and high self-esteem. It's just a great way to maneuver the world through life. It's what Paul Keating was saying. It's just like if you have a good childhood, you just carry that love on your shoulders for the rest of your life. Mm. That's what they're saying. I don't think that it really matters if kids get hit or not. I'm sure that that's just going to fire up huge debate. But, look, it's just really not obvious. Really. Most don't people are pro-hitting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does anything wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think that that's actually the defining trait. It's just like, you know, are you doing that in their own good or are you doing yeah. that because they pissed you off? It's a bigger question so of you like, shouldn't like, yeah, the whole thing, intent. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of. Don't like, be angry when you hit a kid. Yeah, it's, it's the emotional intent of it, I think. Instead of. That actually, I like that answer. I really appreciate that. I, I I think that makes sense to me. Do you have a do you have two cents on it or should we go? I literally second that 100%. I think like if your kid is being a little shit in a Burger King, just give him a little smack, you know? 
It's not the end of the world. No, but that's what he's saying. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what he's saying. That's okay. Dead of the year. Opposite of what he said. Oh, is that the opposite he of what he said? He said that saying? you need to look at what the kid is doing. And if it is like, yes, if, but if, most if you're the hitting the kid because you're angry and you just want them to like do what you want, or if you're hitting them for like a greater purpose, like what's the intent of that kid? What the kid is trying okay, to do? I agree is with he that. being a dick at Burger King for like, um, what, what, what is like, if, is he being a bully or is he just being curious? Like there's yeah, different yeah, yeah, emotions. Yeah, so like you should only I, I, use corporal punishment in cases where um yeah where like yeah you're ma- and and don't be angry. And- I'll just make an exception that it's like any fast food joints. Give him a smack. That's the exception, personally. Miss Lovesteak. But all generally right. speaking, I think that's pretty much on the and money. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Go for the closing, Jordan. Oh. Donate on uh, like. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Make sure that you give us money on Patreon because we really <laughs> want that large screen in the background. And then I'm maybe. Sorry, but uh, if we get that large screen, we're putting info wars on it. Yes. 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 And I think that it's a cool idea that if you guys send in, you know, I don't know, whatever you kids like, beads. I assume we can hang it on the wall or whatever. As long as it's not really reason. fucked up shit. And it will be. Yeah. Yeah, it probably will be. But like, can you not do that? Don't, don't send the most <laughs> fucked up. Don't send stuff that that will haunt our dreams. But yeah, you know that'll be a that'll be a wild ride. And uh, why don't you come along for the wild ride? Just hop on in. The seat's warm. Yeah. And when I'm saying things that are crazy and things that aren't crazy, if somebody makes a mosaic of what they imagine Miss Love's kidneys look like. I'm putting it up. I'm putting that on my... Uh, I'm, I get a tattoo of that. Can I wear my glasses? Is this the end? Yeah, because I want to finish with my glasses. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. We made it. Eek. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.